1440 and the 1428 were the very early cars and they were four cylinder hotted up Morris Oxfords. Kimber had already put his mark onto those cars but he really wanted to design something that was a bit special and he decided to start a scratch and have a special chassis built with special axles and a, and a one-off designed engine. We see here the radiator which is the start of the MG radiator as we know it. It went right through all the Triple M cars, T-Type, through to the TF. Prior to this radiator, of course, the really early cars had the bull nose radiator and the, what we call the flat nose. In 1928, two new models appeared, one of which is highly significant and the other one's a very nice motor car. The, uh, the very nice motor car is the 1880, which um, is a two and a half litre engine car, overhead cam, quite a sophisticated specification. And, um, was generally expected to be sold as a large touring car, um, commodious tu touring car with either a saloon or closed body. A few of them produce the two-seater bodies. Uh, the, the most popular body now is the speed model, but the touring cars actually sold better. And strictly speaking, um, some of the speed models that are now around uh, weren't originally so built. Uh, in the background here we have two 1880s. These cars could have been produced either at uh, Oxford just before MG moved to Abington or right after MG moved to Abington. They were produced in either place. Uh, they're six-cylinder cars. First, uh, the first ones were built on uh, Bainton Road, I believe. And Sess Cousins, who's the number one employee for the MG Works, he's a fellow who, uh, who really began uh, for Cecil Kimber working uh, building cars and doing things like that. He's the man who did some of the uh, original design on these cars. And I remember him telling me that, uh, that when uh, Kimber found out that he could get a hold of this six-cylinder engine to build a car, he said, uh, uh, said to Cousins that he wanted him to go out and, and, uh, and draw up some plans for it. And Cousins had to say, well, I don't have any, any drawing instruments. So Kimber gave him a few pounds and he went down to the local uh, art store bought a drawing board, a T-square, a triangle, and a few pencils and came back and sat down and, and did the drawings for the 1880. It's a wonderful car. Uh, one of these, the one on, the, on your left is a, is a four-seater and then there's a two-seater. Uh, there were a variety of body styles built. Never terribly successful racing, but a very, very elegant car and uh, very sporting. Uh, it, it was certainly built in the true tradition of safety fast. This is an 1880 Mach 1 speed model. This was the University Motors show car. It has UM on, on the side of the bonnet here, painted. Uh, this car is cloth covered. And these cars were capable of going 80 miles an hour. In fact, the factory guaranteed 80 miles an hour. If it did not go 80 miles an hour, you, you could bring it back to the dealers and they would have to retune it and it would, they would guarantee 80 miles an hour on this car. It has some nice features. It has a separate added oil reserve tank up in the bulkhead. This is the entrance, put the oil in, the cap, and as you drove along, you pressed a button on your dashboard, and it would tell you how much oil in your sump. And if you needed more oil, you just turn a little lever, and the oil from here would go into your sump. And in the owner's manual, it says that you didn't have to come out and check your oil and get messed up. You could do it while driving your car. That, that's quite an outstanding feature. This is a 1929-1880 Mark I speed model. And uh, it's, a, it's a narrow bodied body and it's panel. 
That is, you had the choice of a wide body that had the handbrake on the inside or a, a narrow body that had the handbrake on the outside. And um, you had a choice of fabric bodies or panel, aluminum paneled on the outside that's painted. And this is a panel body, uh, 1880. It's a Mark I chassis. It's kind of rare in that it has a four-speed box in it and a servo for the mechanical brakes. And most Mark I's did not have the four-speed box and the servo. That came with the Mark II's. This one was sold rather late in the production schedule uh, in uh, March of 31. And it's a 29 car, so you can tell they had a little trouble selling them. And, uh, and uh, as the story goes, they did lots of things to, to get the buyers to buy them, and that's, I'm sure, the person who bought this one said, you know, I want the better gear, the four-speed gearbox, and I want the, the servo for the mechanical brakes, so it's a nicer car to drive. We haven't done a major restoration on it. This is as it was. Um, this is the paint job on here I would say is probably the from the 40s and um, and so nothing you know has been really done to it in the way of restoration except mechanical and we've driven it I raced it at Portland I've raced it at Laguna Seca I've raced it at San Diego In 1930, there was a Mark II version of the 1880, which sported a four-speed gearbox, a much heavier car. Now, also in 1930, there was a Mark III version produced, which was a racing car, and the first MG racing car. Um, this was supposed to have been capable of 100 miles an hour, but unfortunately couldn't quite make it. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting motor car, beautiful thing to look at but um, unfortunately it was out of date. Right, this is a 1933 MG 1880 and it is a Mark II speed model version. This particular car was designed by Cecil Kimber to attract the people that were buying Bentleys. I think Kimber actually wanted to produce a Bentley and this was his answer. They produced a Mark I, a Mark II and a Mark III. We have here on this trip a Mark I speed model. This is the Mark II speed model. The Mark III was the racing Tigress. They only built five of those, but unfortunately at Brooklands that particular car swallowed its tonsils and retired and the Mark III never raced again. Of this particular type of car they built five examples and this is the last one they built. The 1880 is a straight six cylinder car. This in the Mark II form has a four speed gearbox and in a Mark I form a three speed gearbox. They're very fast cars, they're pleasurable to drive, they're quite capable of doing 70 to 75 miles per hour all day. They built 236 Mark IIs of which probably some 20 survive and probably about 12 are actually running on the road. Got the scrap for the second place. I think we've lost the BMW.